said that to his face. I'm lost without you. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship, and we'd like to ask you if you're able to stand and join us in singing our prelude to, in, of worship and praise. Uh, the first song might not be as familiar to you, so we're going to sing it through the first time for you and then ask you to join in in the last two times we go through it.
Sorry. There you go. <laughs> and as um, we come into this time of worship today, that, that we can just um, fully and, and wholly come into the presence of God. This morning in my uh, personal time of devotion and, and worship, uh, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 spoke to me. It says, my children, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This morning our prayer is that during this time of worship that you hear God speak to you, that in the midst of everything you're going through, you are ready to receive all that God wants to do abundantly in your life. And so as we come into this time of worship today, Pastor Micah will come forward and lead us into our call to worship and, and opening worship today. Well, good morning. Let's join together in this call to worship taken from Psalm 93. The Lord reigns and is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed and guided with strength. The, the Lord, Lord established the word. It, it shall, shall never be moved. Your throne has been established from old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is majesty. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Join us in our opening song, Burn the Ships. Leave the past, 
don't you look back let us join together in this opening prayer in you alone O god our lord a very present help in times of trouble we seek refuge in you may you incline your ears to us in times of peace in times of war to be our god and for us to be your people we seek you lord to bring peace to your world and healing to our hearts our minds and souls in jesus name we pray Amen. So today's Bible verse says, come to me, everybody who works hard and tired, and I'll give you rest. I am gentle, and you're going to find rest for your souls. Did you know that Jesus has gone through the things that we've gone through? If he had people that didn't like him, he had people that were mean to him, he had people lie to him, he was even tempted and deceived all those things all those things and so Jesus knows what we're going through every day when we meet mean people or if somebody's lied to us or if we hear that somebody doesn't like us Jesus has been through all of that too so we can look to Jesus for help and guidance and he's been there so he knows how to help us out so whenever we have these troubles and we're tired or We've worked hard and we have people in our lives that are really giving us a hard time Jesus has had all the same things too so we need to remember that so this week if we're having a hard day we just remember that Jesus had hard days too and so we need to look to him to find out how to get through that hard day and he'll help us ready Heavenly Father thank you for this sweet lady. Thank you for all of the little children out there and for this great day. And Lord, as we struggle through our days, we know that you've been there. We know that you've had the same experiences as us. So Lord, help us be strong. Help us get through these days. And be with us this week as we go out in our worlds. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We do want to welcome all of you who are here with us this morning, and we also want to welcome those who are joining us on WXZY Radio 101.7 and those who are with us on our live Facebook and YouTube streams. It is really good to be together in worship today. I would ask you, uh, as you're able to please rise, and we're going to join together in reading our morning scripture, uh, first from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 9. Let's join together. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And then from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 29. Come to me, all that you are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This today is the word of God for you, for all of us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, and you may be seated. Today, I, I pray, Lord, that, that this word, this living and, and active word, will find a place in our living and active souls that will draw us closer to you, that will speak volumes to every situation that we are going through in our life today. And I pray, Lord, that you would use me to speak the words that you desire to be shared I pray that you would use the thoughts that rise from my heart, that they would be your thoughts. Speak to us this morning, and may we be ready to hear with our hearts, with our minds, with our souls, with our everything. Speak to us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We pause in the midst of many situations that have occurred in our lives. We know that we have just come through a very uh, difficult season in this nation uh, because of the election. And that there are those who are very happy and that there are those who are very disappointed. And we have to always consider though what it will take to get us to move forward to be the people of God that we have been created to be um, over the last eight and a half years that we have been here I have returned to these scriptures that I have used this morning often because I believe that it is a call on our lives, on all of our lives, to move past the past and to realize in our lives truly what will get us through. I know that we place a lot of focus on situations that are going on around us. I know that we place a lot of focus on personal issues, um, financial issues, um, relationship issues. And sometimes we come to the place that we just don't know what we will do to get us through. And as I mentioned just a little bit ago, in my own life, these scriptures from Isaiah 55, actually all of Isaiah 55, um, and the scripture from Matthew 11 have been go-to scriptures, have been foundational, some of those foundational scriptures in my life that I return to time and, and time again. And so I hope to be able to answer the question for you this morning, what will get us through, what will bring us to the place that we can once know the joy and the peace that is available for all of us. And the first thing comes from Isaiah 55, to seek the Lord. And, and not just to, to seek the Lord as a casual, oh yeah, I saw God, I'm moving on on my own way. 
but to seek the Lord with all of our heart and with all of our mind and with all of our soul. But then once we seek him, even in those moments in our life when life seems so overwhelming, when we are searching for direction, it becomes very essential, essential to trust, to trust, to trust in the way that God is making for us. But one of the first things that has to happen is that we have to be in tune with God. We have to earnestly be seeking God, not just to take care of our problems and our situations, but to see us through. And then in remembering that God's ways are not our ways. We have, since the very beginning of time, chose our own way in many different situations. History of Scripture records over and over again the people, the nations, the families, the individuals that turned their backs on God. And when they did that, it did not fare well for them until they turned back with, with all of their heart and with all of their soul, with, with their everything, and follow that plan that, that God has laid out for our life, understanding that his plans we can trust. He is the author, the finisher, and the perfecter of life and of our faith. Secondly, that we need to trust in the sovereignty of God. Even, even when the path is unclear, that we still trust that God is in control. Not any president, not any king, not any authority, not any government, not any person, God is in control. And will, will, if we allow it, control our destiny, control our life in, in all that we do. The other thing is that we have to turn to, to God's mercy because God's mercy is available always to us. And even when we feel distanced, many times because of our own shortcomings and choosing our own direction, we still have a loving God who is offering us forgiveness and offering us redemption in a way that, that changes our life in a way that changes our life. I shared with you, um, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before because time flies, and um, about that, that importance of Sabbath, of, of being alone with God, of listening um, to God. And, you know, recently, um, through personal burdens and situations and, and things in my own life that maybe even other people have caused because I have become, because we do become more concerned what others might think of us rather than what God thinks of us and that we try to live up to people's expectations instead of living into God's expectations. We begin to, to hear the words that, that are, are spoken by Jesus. When Jesus invites us to, to take him on, to take his, his yoke on, and, and to learn from him. Now, a lot of our young people are thinking yoke. We, in this country, really don't know what a yoke is, and that's no yoke. <laughs> uh, no, 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 drum roll. Um, what a yoke is. Um, when we were in Haiti, uh, we see yokes all the time. Uh, and it's this apparatus, usually wooden, 
that holds two animals that are working together, that are moving together. It is a wooden thing usually that goes around their necks and this thing goes across the top and it keeps them together. But as I, I've thought about this often, so many times we are yoking ourselves with the wrong things. Because in that yoke, there will always be one strong leader. There will always be one of those work animals that will set the pace. And often when we are yoked with the wrong one, um, we end up in the wrong direction. We end up going to the places that, that we don't need to go. But here's what I know about being yoked with Jesus. As the scripture says, it is described that his heart is gentle and humble and promises us rest for the soul. And, and being yoked with Jesus will never take us to the wrong direction. Being yoked with Jesus will never bring a physical mental or spiritual harm to our lives. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that we have this yoke available to us that we can embrace. Because the yoke with Jesus is not one of oppression. It, it's, not, it's not one of devastation. It, it's one of hope, of partnership. And by yoking ourselves to him, we will find strength and support. And why is the burden of Jesus so light? Because most of the times, he is carrying us. He, he is directing us and, and guiding us. And through his examples, through the examples that we read about in Scripture, that's why I just keep driving home to, to read, to read, to read Scripture for yourself. That's why we're including it in as many places in our worship services as we can. Because this word becomes so living and active, and it can teach us, and it can change us. And it becomes the action of, of spreading scriptural holiness, the teachings of Christ for other people. You want to get eyes of people looking at you? Take your Bible into the restaurant and open the Bible and begin to read it. And watch as people pass by and look at, at what you're reading. And that, whether they ask a question or say a word, with so many choices of so many things there is to read. That speaks volumes that, that you have chose to read God's word and to allow it to change you. We have the assurance of his presence. Even in Jesus' final departing words, he made a promise. That promise was... I am giving you the Holy Spirit. I am giving you one who will be your advocate, who will be your guide, who will be your counsel, who will always be with you. I am not leaving you abandoned, but I'm giving you a way that, that this promise of, of the Holy Spirit becomes the assurance of God's presence and it becomes that which will get us through <clears throat> through trials <clears throat> through tribulation it will be that that will get us through the the situations of life that are dragging us down but we have to be so willing so willing 
to accept God's presence <clears throat> in our lives. That when we seek Him, as I said earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, we will trust not just to get through the situation that we are in, but we will trust in the way that God will always make for us. That we, in these moments of uncertainty, will have faith over fear. That we will let our faith in God's promises overshadow the fears and, and the tough times and the tough places of life. Because of the promise, because of the promise to never leave us nor forsake us. And I want to encourage you today to hope in those promises. There's more than 700 of them in Scripture, I believe, in the last theological count. I never have counted them one by one. But, but those who study that believe there to be some like 700 promises that God has made to us that have never been broken. Never. And, and so we have that. We have that. Now, one of the things, one of the scriptures that I have been quoting in my ministry here in Cain and even before, and I can remember the first time that I quoted this scripture was when we first came to Cain um, eight and a half years ago, and I was asked to do the uh, Memorial Day service down on the point to say the prayer. And I remember very vividly the Lord drawing me to this scripture from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And I have continued, continued to, to base a lot on this scripture. When people look at this nation and the problems that we are facing and wonder why. We cannot blame it on political powers. We cannot blame it on leaders. It really comes back to the people. It really comes back to the people. And this scripture spoke speaks to a very difficult time in Israel's history when they had turned their backs on God. Listen to this, and you know this scripture, 2 Chronicles 7:14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. So if we, all of us, that are standing firm on our faith, begin to, to turn back to what's important, begin to once again make God priority in our lives, then we are going to see a move of God like we've never seen before. It's happened before, and it can happen again. But one of the things we have to do is burn the ships of the past and step into the new and the glorious way that God wants to move in, and work in each of our lives. And I'm speaking that to the church. I'm, I'm speaking that to the unchurch. I'm speaking it for all to hear. I believe this within my heart. I believe this within my heart. That it is just going to take us turning back to God. And it is going to take us who claim that in helping others to turn back to God also. Last night as uh, we were getting ready for Saturday evening worship. Um, you might not know this, but I preached the same sermon base three times 
a week, four, four times a weekend, uh, though it changes from time to time. But I am very aware when I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak. And last night, as I was coming up, I was just about in this area getting ready to sit down for the start of the service, and I heard the Holy Spirit speak. And this is what I heard speaking in my heart. We show up to ask God to do something for us. We see today on the wall, God bless America. On, the, on our banners, God bless America. In honor of this country. We love this country. We ask for that. We seek that. We ask God to do for us. But the question I really heard last night is, what are you willing to do for God? What are, what are you willing, you know, speak this to the congregation. What are you willing to do to God, for God? Are you willing to, to move in, move past the season of our life, to hold fast to the truth of God's ways being higher than our ways, that God knows more than we know, that God wants to direct us in better places than we want to go, and that God's love is beyond measure? It is not, it is not limited to just certain situations. That by seeking him and trusting in his wisdom and resting in Jesus, we will find the strength to persevere. And it's, it's my prayer that we carry that hope into our hearts. That, that we carry that movement of God into our homes and into our communities and in, into everything that God wants to do more in our lives. As Ephesians 3 says, more than we can ever ask or even imagine. Yes, we pray, God bless America. But how will we bless God with our lives? Let us pray. Lord, in the midst of everything that is around us, just may we be humble before you today. May we be drawn back to a purpose of you, of loving you, experiencing you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our souls. Lord, let us see forward the clear path that you have for each and every one of us. Let us be yoked with you so that we can be that and who you've created us to be. Lord, have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we uh, move forward, we want to share in a time of, of testimony and a time of praising God for all that we have been brought through and all that God will do. And as um, we do that uh, this morning, I just want to take a moment. I know that the, those who served in the military, veterans, will be honored in the 11 o'clock service. I just want to take an opportunity to honor anyone who is here this morning who has served in the active military. If you have, would you please rise so we could honor you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We want to give you an opportunity also to um, share any praises that you might have. Anyone have a praise to share or a testimony to share today? Good word to share. That's an interesting sound. That one? 
Okay. Sorry As, about uh, that. <laughs> so uh, Pam and I had the privilege of attending an awesome conference Friday and Saturday, and I just wanted to to thank God for the opportunity to hear these people speak into our lives and and to uh, fill us full of, of things that we can hopefully share and spread uh, to help others feel the same way. So I just wanted to thank God for that opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. As we turn to prayer concerns, we do want to remind you of the prayer concerns that are uh, listed both on our whiteboard that is out in the entrance way. Uh, some of them might be more current than what we have on our list, so please pay attention to those. And uh, in addition, for new prayer concerns, uh, we want to remember Marty Reynolds, Hadley Rose, Karen and Mel Miller, Eric Lundin, Leroy Harlan, Kevin Rogers, Dustin Ferranti, Chrissy Worthington, Dave and Matilda Walker, John Simons, John DeWalt, Liza Kopp, Steve Heasley, Lori Wilson, Barry Chandler, and Dan Boyer, and the other names that we see listed on our prayer concern list. I also have received some uh, private requests for prayer, uh, for unspoken requests for people to be remembered, and we do want to uh, remember those as well. Are there others that we can share this morning? Say again. Peace, Jerusalem. Okay. Yesterday, when we were at the conference, um, Reverend Erica Weller was there, and I don't know if anyone remembers the name, but we've been praying for her because she has a need for a kidney while well, she's still not even on the list yet so please keep uh, reverend erica weller in your prayers thank you others as uh, we go to a time of prayer this morning uh, our prayer as we begin our time of prayer this morning our prayer scripture this week is from Psalm 17 6 and I would ask that you would join with me in praying this scripture as um, we begin today let's pray I call upon you for you will answer me O God incline your ear to me hear my words O Lord may Everything about this time of worship today be so living and active that it just causes us to shudder in your presence and to experience you and to experience your hope in, in ways that we never even began to think or dream about. May we reflect, Lord, and not be stuck in the past, but allow the past to teach us how we need to move forward into the brightness and into the hopefulness that is created by you. Lord, guide our ways, guard our steps, lead us to the place that, that we so desperately, desperately need to be. And while we do that today, may we just pause for a moment and seek forgiveness for our own sinfulness, because we're all sinners. We're all sinners who are saved by your grace and by you at work within us. And so forgive us, Lord, when we have sinned, when we have fallen short of your glory, when we have chose our own ways Forgive us as a nation. Forgive us as a church. Forgive us as families and communities. And help us to see you more clearly and love you 
more with, with all of our hearts and, and minds and, and souls. Today, as, as we pause in this place, we do pray for peace. We pray for peace throughout the entire world. We are drawn to the situation in Israel, and we pray, Lord, for peace in that place. We pray, Lord, for the situation that continues in Haiti. And we pray, Lord, for a just resolution that brings hope back to the Haitian people, that brings peace to the streets, that brings food to the hungry, that brings safe water to the thirsty. And as we pray today, Lord, we pray for our own nation, for our own struggles, for our own division. Help us to see, Lord, that the only way we're going to get it together is to be called back to you and to turn to you and, and to your ways. We, we just pray today, Lord, for this nation, this nation that was founded on the principles of God, that we would be one nation, undivided, and we pray for that. We, we think of our men and women who serve presently in many places throughout the world. We think of those who have given their lives for freedom. We think of those, both living and dead, who have gave it all for this nation. And we give you thanks for them, for their lives, for their memories. Pray today, Lord, for the leaders of our nation. We pray for those who have been elected into positions within our nation. And we pray, Lord, that they will seek you as well and that your wisdom will be poured into them. We pray, Lord, for the hurting, for those that are caught in the midst of addictions, for those that are dealing with mental illnesses and challenges for those that are dealing with economic circumstances, we pray, Lord, that they too will seek you. And Lord, for your church here on earth, the church that you have called to be your people, may we not shrink from that call, but answer it with all of our hearts and our souls to do what you call us to do, to be your church here on earth. And as we think of those who are in hospitals and nursing homes, we pray. We lift before you these names on our prayer concern list this morning for uh, Pastor Erica Wellner. We pray for Marty Reynolds, for Hadley Rose. We pray for Karen and Mel Miller. We pray for Eric Lundin, for Leroy Harlan, for Kevin Rogers and Dustin Ferranti, for Chrissy Worthington, Dave and Matilda Walker, for John Simons and John DeWalt, Liza Kopp and Steve Heasley, and Lori Wilson, Barry Chandler, Dan Boyer, and all of the other names that, that we see on our prayer concern list. Lord, we lift them before you today for your touch upon their lives, for your healing power and strength to be in their lives, whatever the situation might be. And Lord, as we leave this sacred place of prayer today, we pray that you will hear our prayers and that we will accept thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven as we pray that prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
as uh, we come to a time of tithes and offerings, I just very quickly want to make a couple of um, announcements and share a couple of things this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, please uh, be aware, if you haven't noticed it yet, on Tuesdays, there are now two grief support meetings that are taking place. And there is one at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and that is held at the East Cane Methodist Church. And the second one is at 7 o'clock on Tuesday evenings, which is here at KCMC. So please share that word with others. If you have any uh, questions about it, uh, please talk to Shirley, and she'll be glad to, to share any information with you. But please know, even those who are listening on the radio this morning or online, that there are now two grief support groups, one at 2 o'clock at the East Cane Methodist Church and one at 7 o'clock here at the Cane Methodist Church in town. And all are welcome to come. This is a community offering. This is just not for these churches. This is for anyone that desires to come that is dealing with grief. And this has become a very important ministry and focus for our church and we just want to make that available for anyone who wants to participate participate um, please also remember that this week uh, we have two Bible studies that will be taking place one on Wednesday evening and that is at uh, East Cane at 630 and then there is another Bible study here in in this church on Thursday evening at 630 uh, depending on where you want to be in the book of Hebrews, that's where we're studying and that's where we're looking at. Uh, East Cain is a little bit further ahead. And so wherever you want to join in for that Bible study, you are welcome to come and to be a part of it. As always, we want to remind you of the youth activities that are being led by Pastor Micah. And they are meeting every Sunday night here at the church from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And that is for those who are from 6th grade through 12th grade. Again, this is open to the community. <clears throat> this is open to everyone in those age groups. And we invite you to come and to be a part of our youth Bible study, our youth group from 6 to 8 o'clock every Sunday evening. And as um, we uh, go forward, we just want to remind you of the ways in which you can bring an offering uh, before the Lord, whether it be through your financial gifts, through your tithes, and through your offerings. Our offering scripture today is from Psalm chapter 4, verse 5, if you would join with me in it. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Let us bring our gifts and tithes and offerings before the Lord. <laughs> Join together in this offering prayer. 
Please rise if you are able, whether in body or in spirit. God and Father of all, we praise you that all things which come to us are yours. We are thankful that you provide for us financially, you provide for us spiritually, and you provide for us in so many other ways. We cannot begin to list the ways you we know you don't need any material from us, but you desire our reverence. And so, blessed Lord, we give you our tithes and offerings now. But more importantly, we give you our love and our esteem. Amen. Our closing song today is Firm Foundation. Please join us in the singing of this song. Just a few announcements for y'all. The last Sunday of the month, 
which I believe is the 24th, we are going to be having Bless Fest. This, as part of this, we will be sharing a meal together and then decorating the church for Christmas. So if you like food and or if you like decorating for Christmas, we would love if you would join us for that. As Christmas is over, almost upon us, we are preparing for the Advent season. As a church, we are going to be having a devotional every day leading into Christmas. Out in the chapel, we have a sign-up sheet if you feel so inclined to write a devotion based off a scripture we have provided. If you are joining us online or on the radio and you would like to write a devotional, Feel free to contact the church, whether through a phone call or through email, and we can get you the scriptures so you too could write a devotional. Now, as we prepare to go out into our mission field and live into the calling God has given us, let's share in this benediction from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go in his peace.